Hi, I am Pavya from the Department of Computer Science, Vellalar College for Women. Now I am going to say a few words about managing input and output files in Java. So this part consists of introduction, concepts of streams, stream classes, other useful input output classes using the file class, input output ex exceptions, creation of files. First one introduction, a file is a collection of related records placed in a particular area on the disk. A record is composed of several fields and a field is a group of characters. Characters in Java are Unicode characters composed of two bytes, each byte containing either binary digit 1 or 0. Storing and managing data using files is known as file processing which includes tasks such as creating files, updating files and manipulation of data. The process of reading and writing objects is called object serialization. Next one concept of streams. In file processing, input refers to the flow of data into a program and output means the flow of data out of a program. Input to a program may come from keyboard, mouse, memory, disk, network or another program. Output from a program may go to the screen, printer, memory, disk, network or another program. Java uses the concept of streams to represent the ordered sequence of data, a common characteristic shared by all the input output devices. A stream presents a uniform, easy to use, object oriented interface between the program and the input output devices. This picture represents the relationship of a Java program with input output devices. Here the input devices are keyboard, mouse, memory, disk and network and the output devices are screen, printer, memory, disk and network. A stream in Java is a path along which the data flow like a river or a pipeline along which water flows. It has a source and a destination. The concept of sending data from one stream to another has made streams in Java a powerful tool for a file processing. Java streams are classified into two basic types namely input stream and output stream. An input stream extracts data from the source and sends it to the program and an output stream takes data from the program and sends it to the destination. The program connects and opens an input stream on the data source and then reads the data serially. Similarly, the program connects and opens an output stream to the destination place of data and writes data out serially. This picture represents using input and output streams. Here source, source and then moves to the input stream and reads the program. So next one program and then writes into the output stream and then it reaches the destination. Next one stream classes. Stream classes may be categorized into two groups based on the data type on which they operate. Byte stream classes and character stream classes. First one byte stream classes that provide support for handling input output operations on byte. Character stream classes that provide support for managing input output operations on characters. Byte stream and character stream classes contain specialized classes to deal with input and output operations independently on various types of devices. Next one other useful input output classes are the Java input output package supports many other classes for performing certain specialized functions. They include random access file and stream tokenizer. The random access file enables us to read and write bytes text and Java data types to any location in a file. This class extends object class and implements data input and data output interfaces. Next one the class stream tokenizer a subclass of object can be used for breaking up a stream of text from an input text file into a meaningful pieces called tokens. Next one using the file class the Java input output package includes a class known as the file class that provides support for creating files and directories. The class includes several constructors for instantiating the file objects. This class also contains several methods for supporting the operations such as creating a file, opening a file, closing a file, deleting a file, getting the name of a file, getting the size of a file, checking the existence of a file, 
renaming a file, checking whether the file is writable and checking whether the file is readable. The input output exceptions when creating a files and performing input output operations on them the system may generate input output related exceptions. The basic input output exception classes are classes and their functions are here it shows in the tabular column first the input output class exception classes are end of file exception, file not found exception, interrupted input output exception, input output exception and their functions are for end of file exception signals that an end of the file or the end of the stream has been reached unexpectedly during input. For file not found exception the function informs that a file could not be found. For interrupted input output exception the function is wants that an input output operations has been interrupted. For input output exception the function is signals that an input output e exception of some sort has occurred. So each input output statement or group of input output statement must have an exception handler around it as shown below. So this is the try catch statement. Proper use of exception handlers would help us identify and locate input output errors. Next creation of files. If we want to create and use a disk file we need to decide the following about the file and its intended purpose. First one suitable name for the file and data type to be stored and then purpose that is for reading, writing or updating and then method of creating the file. A file is a unique string of characters that helps identify a file on the disk. A file name may contain two parts that is a primary name or an optional period with extension. Here it shows the example that salary is a normal, normal primary name and test dot document is primary name with the optional period that is dot and then with the extension doc it is same as student dot txt. Data type is important to decide the type of the file stream classes to be used for handling the data. We should decide whether the data to be handled is in the form of characters, bytes or primitive type. The purpose of using a file must also be decided before using it. For example, we should know whether the file is created for reading only or writing only or both the operation. For using a file, it must be opened first. This is done by creating a file stream and then linking it to the file name. A file stream can be defined using the classes of read or input stream for reading data, write or output stream for writing data. There are two ways for initializing the file stream objects. We provide the name of the file either directly or indirectly. It shows the direct approach example. Here first one file input stream FIS is the declaration of a file stream object and assigning the file name to the file stream object. It is an example for indirect approach example. So declare it first to declare a file object and assigns the file name to the file object and then it gives the value of the file object to the file stream object. The code above includes five tasks that is select a file name declare a file object, give the selected name to the file object declared, declare a file stream object, connect the file to the file stream object. So instantiating file stream objects, uh, both the approaches are given. So first one direct approach, uh, here the stream object is FIS as created and file name is test.data. So in indirect approach here, file stream object is FIS and file object created is in file and the file name is test.data. Thank you.